this man here runs well under 48 seconds. Joint third fastest ever. All right, Benjamin from the USA. 47.02 last year, it's as quick as Ed Moses. So do you, do you not train over the hurdles very often? No, not at all. Well, I, I do, I'll probably do it like once a week, at most twice a week, but besides that, it's just all flat, I'm doing all flat workouts. I mean, as of recently, I've been, you know, I go, I go over, I would go over like one or two hurdles or, you know, do some stuff on the turn. But I mean, for me, once that rhythm is there, once it's established, like I could just tap back in and just, you know, get back to where I was and even some, because now like I've gotten a lot stronger, a lot faster. So it's just kind of tuning it down and okay. not getting too excited and just actually being patient and just running the race the way I'm supposed to. Okay. I think that's been the biggest learning curve this year, but I feel pretty good. Right. How much will you work with your athletes on technique in the four hurdles? It depends on the athlete. Um, some athletes like and or need to hurdle more during the week and some not as much. Um, I think and it depends on what we're working on. So maybe if we're working on a new pattern, then you work that pattern more often than not. Um, I think it's really important to get a lot of running work, right? Because you can be a phenomenal hurdler and it looks so great and pretty and have nothing in between, you can't win, right? Um, but if you, you can be ugly and still run fast in between and win. So I think there's the balance again, right? So again, so some of your hurdlers are gonna be more um, running based and some are more hurdle based. And that's how you decide how you train them. But you wanna hurdle no less than you know once or twice a week and then, but you may do some drills in between, that kind of thing. But definitely you want to nurture the speed um, and the endurance so you can put it all together. So when you talk about rhythm then, yeah, how do you find that rhythm? Is if you've got to race yourself into that rhythm or by working on going over the first hurdle out the blocks, do you get your stride pattern nailed I, down? Yeah, I would say, uh, I'd say exactly what you said, just you know, working out the blocks over the first two or three hurdles just to, you know, get that stride pattern down and get that, you know, that feeling down and knowing, all right, I'm supposed to be here within this amount of time or I'm supposed to be taking 13 or 12 steps maybe between hurdle one and two or hurdle two and three. So it's just all about reestablishing that rhythm, not so much of, you know, running, you know, a bunch of hurdles just to say that I did it and just to get that rhythm down. but. For me, once I get that, once I get the first three down, then the others just, you know, they just all click because I'm on that. I don't necessarily count, and counting is something that some people do. They count their steps so that the right leg, which is their lead leg that they hurdle with, comes up. But I just, I run based off rhythm. Right. So once I establish that rhythm, then uh, I'm, I'm usually pretty good for the, you know, the duration of the race. Do you have the same lead leg all the way around? Yeah, I try okay. to, yeah. Keep uh, the right lead, so that's 13s all the way around. So if I do venture off from that, then it's because I'm either not on rhythm or I'm running a little bit too fast or my stride pattern has like opened up. So, but besides that, yeah, I try to keep, you know, the same lead leg all the way around. I try not to switch, but I mean, if I have to, I will. It's also, it's a very individual sort of approach because Rye was saying yesterday that he doesn't change his lead leg, whereas plenty of hurdlers will shift down coming up through the second curve sure. or various stages. How do you kind of adapt your coaching approach for individuals based on that? Right, I think what you, you look at, you just know who can hold what pattern. Let's say for Rye, for example, yeah, Rye can go 13 all the way around. Um, but if Rye was not fast enough or ready for that, even though we knew we could get there, train him 13 through maybe eight and we'll have him switch to 14 at nine but the stronger and faster he gets, he will end up making that switch. And then once he hits it, now we can, okay, now we keep doing it. Um, now, for example, if someone we know, like you're not hitting this, we gotta figure out how to get you there because you can't win if you don't hold it longer, then it becomes a thing in practice where you say, okay, now I want you to come off and push harder for maybe four or five steps or push an extra step than you normally do, push here, open up, that kind of thing to get it or different drills. But at the end of the day, generally, your hurdler will show you what they're ready for. So it's kind of a combination of being realistic, but also being ambitious when you know that Absolutely. someone's got that And you may not hit it in practice. Yeah. And then you get in the race, and you're like, boom, oh, it just came to me, and I felt great. Yeah. Um, so I think that is what it is. And, but you, you'll set up a general pattern from what you see and where you think they are, and then your, your athlete will tell you 
when they're ready to make a different move. It's pretty, it's kind of almost self-explanatory once you're like, oh, okay, you got it, we're good. <laughs> if it, I mean, focusing on the time is, it's good because you, you want to know, you, you want to set goals for yourself, but at the same time, if you're just going in a race thinking, all right, I need to go run this such and so time, then your chances of probably running that is probably a lot slimmer than you just saying, all right, I'm here to compete. I'm here to just do my best. And I mean, that's what, that's what we've always been taught to do. Just, you know, just go out and run and compete and, mm. you know, the time will come. So, you know, if you've got a fast guy on your outside, are you, are you watching them? Yeah, well, I mean, you kind of do watch them, but at the same time, it's, you must stick to your race plan because you don't want to get out of yourself trying to chase this person. You, you don't know what his race plan is or what he's been doing all year. And I mean, I don't really, yeah, I don't, I just kind of, I just get in my own zone and in my own head. And it's important for you to keep track of what's going on around you. Don't get me wrong, but just, it's important for you not to come out of yourself and not to break your race plan, mm. trying to chase someone else. So, I mean, I'm not, if it's a faster person in front of me, it's really not, you know, that mm. big of a deal practice with Michael Norman every day so I mean it's like what know, did he run 43 yeah, 43 4 and he was right in front of me weather, weather does play an important factor in uh, races whether it's, it's like a headwind on the back stretch or a tailwind on the back stretch or even if it's cold out here I mean it, it does psych you out even if you try to like not think about it and deep down inside it does kind of just it affects you a little bit but it just all comes back to like you know what I said like it's just no matter the situation, you just always got to get it done. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it does play a big role. Um, if there's, you know, if there's a strong headwind or a strong tailwind, like that, that definitely does make a difference, especially in this race. But well, for me, it's more it's uh, to get this, the correct hurdle pattern to hurdle one and two and three. It's it's all about getting, you know, getting out the blocks correctly, and establishing that, you know, that you you, you kind of know. For me, it's kind of innate that rhythm. You know, you just kind of know it, and it's just you could tell if you're not on it and from about i'd say from about like 20 meters out 30 meters out from that first hurdle you're looking at it and you can kind of tell if you're going to get it or not and usually i mean when i see it i kind of just like all right i kind of just in my head i'm just like i just do this little beat i just i clench my jaws like three times and just you know, that usually tell me if I'm on it. It's so weird. It's, you just, you, you establish these weird habits in this race, it's just crazy. So, I mean, that's what I, that's what I kind of do to just, you know, to let me know, all right, you're on, you're on pace to clear this first hurdle. Once you clear the first hurdle, the rest is just, it's just night and day for me. Yeah. Yeah. But it's all about that first yeah. one. So yeah. what do you do? Clench your jaw? Yeah, I was, it's just like, it's just like three taps. I go like, like that and like, probably like the, last 10 or five steps uh, of you know approaching the hurdle and i just kind of take it from there okay yeah that's interesting we were just talking about how important the first hurdle is in the four yeah like just explain a bit about that that if you go over that first hurdle well and you're feeling good about it it sets up your whole race whereas if you don't it can be a little bit more difficult yeah. setting up the the race in the 400 hurdles is big and yeah going over that first one it'll either make you confident and feel good about where you're about to go or you're like oh shoot I gotta fix this and I gotta fix it quick right because again you have 35 meters in between so when you come off you're like this was great now I can keep this going or I have to make an adjustment say your wrong leg comes up or you're too fast and you stutter or you're too slow and you have to push out you know the next hurdle trying to get to the next hurdle so um, if you hit one and you're feeling good generally two is good three, four is good, right? So you have to get one before you can even get to two. So yeah, you have a great first hurdle and you're feeling good about yourself, then you normally can set your race up and be ready. And then the whole, then the work starts again in there. So it's just, there's some different components to it. So, um, but definitely coming out of the blocks and that gun goes off, if you feel good. Cause the thing is too though, when the gun goes off, especially in this, this hurdle race, you've practiced it so much at a certain uh, time, right? So your touchdown is, at a certain place and in a race it's generally going to be faster right because the adrenaline in the race you don't want to get too far off of what you've practiced because then now you may be too close or too fast going into the second and now you mess up the second one so you know you want to stay as close as you can to what you practice but I think every athlete and every coach knows you're probably going to be a little bit faster which is something that you can't control so you go into your race thinking of the rhythm 
that you've been putting in in practice and then the race will take care of the rest.